We took six and the rest were, uh, they were shot uh, a day or two old. Hey folks, today it's something a little bit different. I'm taking a break from DIY, pick up the girls from school, and we're gonna go on a bit of a goat rescue mission. the girls in the farm we're here to pick up these goats and uh man there's a lot of goats i think it's just a, they kidded something like 300 or more crazy i thought we had our hands full ah uh, that's cute the one. are these from that pen or have you picked them up at the wrong pen of which pen have you picked these out of oh we didn't pick them out all right yeah. i think these ones are saying I want that one to be mine. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know why it's just a few. Say bye to the cows. Bye bye cowies. Whoa. They're there quite nice colours, aren't they? I thought they were all going to be white. Yeah. yeah. No. But, so you good. keep an eye on them. So there's six. I think it's just about enough space there, but we're only a short journey home. This is just a, like a massive cat pet carrier. I think it's for like taking dogs on aeroplanes. Um, I think I paid 10 pounds, maybe not even that at an auction for it and it's great for this sort of thing because it's either this or that and that is probably a bit overkill for six kids so the pen is ready for them it's just a case of do we carry them over one by one let me go and open up I don't know yeah ready uh. He's quite big, isn't he? He's quite a striking colour as well. Yeah, I really like the brown one. So I need to, this pallet is where we're going to hang the bucket on, but we need to tie it up. They're hungry already. Rosa, what are you wearing? High heels. Come in on the dry then. Right, it's a bit of a temporary setup, but I'm hoping that that's going to mean it's about the right height. We can all reach that, can't they? Yeah. So I'll put another one there because we've only got five. one, five. Well, they're just nibbly. They're just like normal. Like our poor goats are actually quite, quite calm and tame. These guys are, ow! <laughs> it's like goat massage. <laughs> it's actually quite nice. Hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, a little bit lower. Oh, that's it, you got it. Oh, get off. We need to work out quantity of feed so we know how much to mix up in a bucket to pour into these buckets. Then, stop. So we've done a bit of warm water, topped it up with cold. I don't think there's any lumps in that. Ready for your evening feed? Hold on. Let's just check there's no lumps. It's all right? Yeah. The rest of it can go in there. You see the slots? Yeah, the slots are. Right. We're at an angle like that. Sorry, they'll, they'll... Right, it's the last of the lamb powder, milk powder I've got. I think I've got enough. Until I get it some more.
Have you still got a bit of a cough? Grubby nose. Yeah. Little update on the goats. These goats you haven't really seen on the videos because I keep on putting off making the video. We've moved them on. We've got six of them here, little billy goats, and we've moved them onto this bit of an odd triangle that goes up around the silage clamps. It's a dangerous spot anyway. We don't let the kids up there, but also it's a bit of a pain to maintain and they've been on the two days and done an absolutely awesome job. Uh, the only issue is there is no fence. There's just a great big drop off here. So I'm putting my trust in the fact they are goats and they can find their inner mountain goat and not fall off here. They have managed to reach down and graze or browse all the ivy off, uh, teetering, teetering on the edge. But uh, once they're done there, they're gonna move off to another fenced area. We'll give them a little bit of creep, just to keep them busy and quiet whilst I talk. So I've kind of missed out on these lads because, uh, I don't know, I, I haven't been uh, filming over this side of the barn. Um, but these are the billies. What's the story behind these guys? Well, uh, we started out with our ball goats back in the autumn last year. And we had one set of triplets. So from that, we had one which couldn't walk and wasn't doing very well and needed bottle rearing. So he was on his own and I thought at the time that would be okay, but he kind of needed a goat to be with him or even a lamb. Now in the dairy industry, it's a pretty brutal place to be a boy. Um, of course, they serve no purpose in the dairy side of things. So therefore, if you're, uh, if you're producing your kids each year, you have a surplus of kids because all of these male kids that are born, you have no reason to keep on. Unlike a sheep or even beef cattle or something like that, you, you would be just as well keeping the girls and the boys. Whereas when you've got um, a pure dairy animal, often the male counterpart is, uh, is very much a waste uh, product of the industry because they're not the chunkiest things and their sisters will have been developed specifically to uh, produce lots of milk they haven't been bred specifically to produce lots of meat. So they don't really have much purpose. And financially, it's not viable. Well, what does that mean? Well, it, you know, just like if you're a male chick and you're born into a hatchery, hatching out chickens for the egg industry, you're born into a pretty uh, unwelcoming world in that all the male chicks are disposed of the moment they're born. Um, and unfortunately for male dairy goats, it's just the same thing. So all of these guys, uh, they were, I think there were 300 male kids. Uh, I think someone bought a few of them. Uh, we took six and the rest were, uh, they were shot uh, a day or two old. So that is uh, something that people are perhaps not aware of when it comes to the dairy industry and something that I think is one of those possible topics that people just don't like to talk about. They don't like to consider the fact that just to have your cheese or your milk or whatever, it, it can be just as cruel as eating the animal in the first place. And in some respects, it's worse. Um, maybe we'll do that another day, talk about that. No, we'll talk about it now because it's one of those things that I, I think is a really good talking point. If you're a vegan, you don't eat meat or dairy or eggs. That is fine if you keep it to yourself. And, uh, and I completely respect that because that's a choice. And if that is the choice you've made, you're not being hypocritical if you're doing it right and you're not wearing the leather and you know, you're doing it holistically. If you are a vegetarian, I was a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian for seven or eight years as a teenager. It wasn't a fun time to be a vegetarian back in the nineties, but either way, I was a vegetarian out of choice and I didn't want to eat meat because I didn't feel it was quite right. However, when I look back on it now, I was still drinking milk, eating eggs. And from my point of view now, I think it is worse to be just picking what you eat and, and standing on a soapbox saying, yeah, it's better because I don't agree in the animals being eaten. Yet you're perfectly happy to be drinking the milk, eating the eggs, and not thinking about the implications that that has. And the implications that it has are 
well, you look out into a farmer's field and there might be a thousand free range organic chickens out there that lay your eggs and you think that is just the nicest thing. They're laying eggs every day. They're kept well. No one's getting hurt. Well, in actual fact, for those thousand hens out in the field, there were a thousand cockerels which didn't make it to their second day of life. So in some respects, from my point of view at least, uh, if you're eating a, uh, eating a chicken, both the male and the female counterparts are raised in a free range flock out in the field. And yes, their life might be restricted in length. And yes, you might not agree in that, but at least there has been no waste of life at, you know, right from the get go. Because if you think about losing a life at a day old, no one's benefited there at all. And, uh, you know, we haven't benefited from the nutrients and the, the food that that can produce for us as a population. The animal hasn't benefited at all because it's had no life at all. And for me, if we're going to farm in a sustainable way and if we're going to produce food that is well-rounded and it covers all of our food groups and everything, then I really and honestly think that it is better to eat the animal than waste an animal. Um, it's the same way that I absolutely detest food waste, especially when it comes to meat, because there is nothing worse than someone putting hard work and effort and care into producing uh, slow grown meat, ethically done with the best feed, the best care and welfare, and then someone forgets to cook it in time and it gets chucked in the bin. What a disrespectful thing to do to the life of that animal. So here they are, these are our boys. They came from a local dairy farm and they were, uh, I won't say rescued or, or saved, but they have been given a, a second chance of life here. They will one day be part of um, our meat goat herd or meat goat produce. Uh, so they are here for a medium term basis, but better that than the destination they were due to be headed. So they're a really nice blend of colors. We've got some that are kind of Toggenberg crosses, um, British Alpine, I think maybe the black one. Not sure about these form ones, but either way, really interesting colors. They're having a bit of creep now. They've got plenty of hay, but they will be joining our other goats or one of our paddocks uh, going out, maybe with the rams, I haven't decided yet. They just need a clean bill of health before they go. Unfortunately, they arrived from the dairy. Uh, they probably didn't have a good amount of colostrum, if any. Uh, I was told they did, so hopefully that is the case, but they have coxie. They just had a few other sniffles and coughs and I didn't trust it. And I think some of it spread into our boar goats, but we've been monitoring it. They're still not 100%, but once I'm happy with them, they will be going out and with the with a shelter up in one of the fields, uh, they can go out and enjoy life out on the grass and find some hedges to nibble at. But they're great little characters. They are very goaty goats. They love to jump, climb, bite, nibble, and just generally cause mischief. No doubt some of you will have seen these guys running around and causing mischief in the back of our videos over the past few months. But now is the time to kind of shine a bit of a spotlight on why we have these goats, where they came from, and, and obviously I've explained some of that. And really it's just a way of making people think a little bit. This tiny little video in the corner of YouTube isn't going to change anything in the whole scheme of things. But if we don't understand farming and the, the, the bit before the supermarket... Uh, then I think it's it's naive, you know, it's a, it's a shame for people not to understand what the food is that they're eating. And if there's just any little way that smallholders, small farms, or, or even farms that are looking to diversify could make a use of this uh, part of the, the industry, then it would be great. And I know there are people around who are trying to raise dairy uh, billies or weathers to, um, to make use of that but it's financially hard because you've got to buy the milk powder for to, to start with. Um, as soon as you got the vet out once like we did and then bought all the milk powder, I mean, you're already at a loss and they're a few weeks old. 
So we're just doing our bit by raising these guys. They're, they're doing their bit by keeping the hedges trimmed and, and just really helping uh, the land that we've got here. And I would love to say that we could make some sort of viable business from it. I just don't think it's there. Um, perhaps if different breeding was used, so if a different buck was used over the dairy goats, that would, a bit like in, in beef cross dairy cows, there would be a, a bigger animal there to raise and i know that is done and i think the dairy uh, we spoke to they asked me about breeders for boar goats so it might be that they're going to try that next year but you know it's just one of those things that i thought was a worthwhile talking point these boys are going to be here for you know well over a year before they are of any size they're huge guys uh, you know they they got they grew like bean poles to start with they big lanky things and they overtook our other kids uh, pretty quickly but they just don't have the chunk to them uh, so we'll see we'll see what they do um, we've started using our spent grains from the local brewery and obviously all the hay that we've got here as well to kind of supplement their grazing and hopefully they're gonna they're gonna bulk out a little bit but anyway if you've got any comments on this let's start a little bit of a discussion down in the comments below it'd be great to hear your thoughts maybe it's something you'd never even thought about anyway we've done our little bit not that it makes really much of a dent in the whole situation, but there we go. I hope you've enjoyed watching that. Thank you for watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.